Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at the mathematical definition of an inverse function. The mathematical definition says, by definition of inverse, two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses of each other if and only if. This IFF means in math, math ease, if and only if. In other words, both of these things are going to have to be true. If when we do the when we find the composite function f of g of x, that is equal to x. And when we find the composite function g of f of x, that too is equal to x. And there's this little caveat that it has to be true for all x in the domain of g of x. And here it has to be um, true for all this, this um, upside down a means for all or for every uh, x in the domain of um, f of x. And we talked about in the last video how in order to be able to find the inverse functions that the function must pass the horizontal line test or it must be one to one. And that's what this little caveat down here is, is um, discussing, that it has to be true for the x values in that domain. And once we've found that inverse function, or once we call each other inverses, we use this notation. This means the inverse of that. So let's just show that these two functions are inverses of one another. And the way we do that, by definition, we can use the definition to show it, is we need to to show this composite function is equal to x, and we need to show this composite function is equal to x. If that's true, then we'll know that these two are inverses of one another. So we start by finding f of g of x, that composite function. Now remember when we did composite functions, what, the way we did that was we just replaced this g of x, this function, I'm going to rewrite it with that as g of x, because these two things are equal to one another. g of x can also be written as x plus 1 over 6. Then I'm going to input this into my f function. I'm going to input this into that function. So everywhere I see an x in this function, I'm just going to replace it with x plus 1 over 6. Now, that those 6s become 1, and it just leaves me with x plus 1 minus 1, and plus 1 minus 1 just leaves me with 6. So sure enough, when I do this composite function, I get back out what I put in. Let me do it the other direction now. g of f of x. Again, I'm going to rewrite it. Instead of writing f of x, I'm going to write it as um, g of 6x minus 1, because f of x is equal to 6x minus 1. I'm now going to input this into my g function. So everywhere I see an x in my g function, I'm just going to replace it with 6x minus 1. So instead of writing that x, I write 6x minus 1, and then I write everything else that's there, plus 1 over 6. Just inputted that in place of x. Now I simplify. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so it leaves me with 6x over 6. And those two are multiplying, so I can simplify. 6 divided by 6 just gives me 1, or just leaves me with that x. 1 times x is x. So I did get out x when I did the composite for both of them. So therefore, did, um, g of x, f of x, and g of x are inverse functions. We showed that by using the definition. Proof complete. So there's the mathematical definition of an inverse function. In the next video, we're going to look at finding inverse functions and we'll do some examples of finding those inverse functions. Math made simple. It's some math. Thanks for watching.